Assalamu alaikum. Today we have a very special guest. And before I introduce her, shall we go and see a short clip? Barbara Spears, a German born living in Newcastle, fell in love with Bangladeshi food introduced to her by a Bangladeshi neighbor. Her affection with Bangladeshi food and Bangladeshi neighbor grew so much that she decided to go to Bangladesh and then she fell in love with the country and its people. After visiting Bangladesh, she started working with charities which works towards improving lives of children living a rough life on the streets of Bangladesh. Then she started working with the Waterkeeper Foundation to keep the rivers of Bangladesh clean and less polluted. Barbara Spears' work still continues in Bangladesh. I'm sure from that clip you have seen, you have got some glimpses of the person we are going to introduce today. Um, before I go any further, I just want to say a few things about this lady. This lady is very special to us, and I have known her for a, a number of years. My second boy used to go to Kingswood School in Bath with her daughter, and her name is India. She has been involved in many many organizations, starting from being the chairman of Wilshire uh, Institute of Directors, BBC Wilshire Advisory Council, Director of Economic Partnership in Wilshire, Director of Publishing House, these are few. And also very important, and this relates to Bangladesh, International Director Greenfield Foundation, and that deals with the education of Bangladeshi children in the global environment. And it's no other than Barbara Spears. Hello. Welcome to the Thank studio. You. Tell us about this um, World Foundation uh, of uh, relates to the education of children in Bangladesh. And I, I think it's, it relates to the river uh, yes. environment as well. Yes, uh, it works in fact very closely uh, with the uh, Waterkeeper Foundation in mm. Bangladesh uh, and a number of other organizations such as BAPPA mm. um, are partly involved. The reason uh, I started this many, many years ago is because when I went to Bangladesh I was concerned that there were so many children unaware of the dangers of scrap heaps if you like, mm. rubbish heaps. The feces of the animals also looking for food whilst maybe the children were looking for bottles to save and to sell right. uh, meant that these children could go blind because they would touch the feces. The, the rate of blindness of children in Bangladesh is way higher than that in the Western world. Mm. And I was equally concerned really about typhoid and other implications. Mm. So we are all just one person and we can't save the world no. but we can contribute how did you get involved with the bangladeshi community who did you meet first and how <laughs> yes um this is part of my uh, funny history i got married at 16 and i had okay. a child uh, and i moved to newcastle but you know this husband of mine really wasn't there and uh, i felt my parents had told me this is what you wanted you have to stick with it similar to to an arranged marriage yes. in that sense but I had no money, so I used to go to this halal shop and sometimes even ask whether they had old cabbage leaves that mm -hmm. they weren't selling. And a lady uh, saw me a few times and she said one day, excuse me, uh, can I help you? Uh, you? Do you know what to do with this food? <laughs> and I said, apart from making a German cabbage soup because I'm German, no, I don't. Oh, she said, if you bought broken rice and you bought dal, and she showed Lentils, me what this yes. was, why don't you come to my house with your son and I show you how to cook? Okay. I was so grateful. We'll come back to yeah. the cooking. Then um, you started uh, growing a love and affection for the community. Yes. This was the beginning, yeah? Yes, right? that was the okay. beginning. And then you decided to visit Bangladesh and you went to Silet? Yes, I decided to visit, visit Bangladesh. Uh, 
a couple of people who run a restaurant mm -hmm. uh, in Melksham invited me to come to Bangladesh. I was uh, a little hesitant mm -hmm. and, and afraid, uh, but wanted to. So uh, I decided to go to uh, Dhaka and then to Salet, uh, visit lots of their relatives, and then to a village called Chatak. Chatak. Yes, which that is... That was in 1992? 1992, yes. Mm -hmm. uh, and what I found overwhelmed me. It overwhelmed me because I was asked to speak at schools and universities, and yet I felt that I was learning from the community, community. that there was nothing I could okay. teach. And I talked about my concern for the environment, my concern about children being cleaner and not being allowed uh, to, to get ill because of a lack of knowledge, really. What is your experience in cooking? <laughs> oh, well, um, I know that this is a real show off, but lots of Bengali people have eaten in my house, and most of them say, oh, she cooks better than my wife, which isn't going to go down very well mm. with, with your, your viewers. But mm. I love cooking. Uh, whether it's a pumpkin skin bhaji, or whether it's dal, or whether it's pakoras, or whatever, lamb, I do it all. And I'm obviously always very careful to make sure my food is halal. Mm -hmm. So how many times so far have you been to Bangladesh? About 10 times. 10 times? Yes, about 10 Excellent. times. And when I go these days, it's quite difficult because the number of relatives, so to speak, gets bigger. bigger and really. the number of places I have to visit gets bigger. So my entire three weeks are spent visiting people I have known since 92, 92. and their extended and grown family. Uh, and I just love it and I feel so at home there and I miss them when I I'm not there. Uh, I, I just feel that these people, uh, they humble me mm. in every which way. Okay, thank you. And um, once I think somebody asked you about uh, uh, the hotel, you know, the staying in Bangladesh, yes, what yes, kind of hotel yes. it was? When I was the president of the Institute of Directors, somebody said to me, oh, uh, what, what, what's going on with this Bangladesh thing, I hear? I said, yes, I said, I love the country. Um, do, you, do you stay in Dhaka? Yes. Well, thank God for that, he said, because there are a number of top hotels, aren't there? I said, I don't stay in a hotel. I said, I stay with the people. I said, with the people, I said, and I uh, recognize that Bathrooms are different mm. in Bangladesh villages, uh, maybe not so much today, mm. but then. Um, and that uh, uh, I, I live with the people and eat with the people. And I said, you know, I said, if you uh, climbed Mount Everest, I said, and you went through all that hardship to want to get to the top, I said, would you be expecting sort of McDonald's at the top there or what? I mm. said, and, and, and a portaloo, I said, or would you feel that the experience that you're having far outweighs Thank any you. comforts. Okay. Um, tell us about the Blue Planet Initiative. Yes, the Blue Planet Initiative is led by Sharif Jamil, my good friend. He's a Bangladeshi. Yes, he's a Bangladeshi and uh, he comes over quite a lot yes. and uh, uh, works I've met here. Him, yes. yes, you have met him. Uh, he's a, a very influential activist uh, in Bangladesh. Uh, and uh, we work together and when he comes here he stays at my house mainly, ma mainly. Mm -hmm. uh, and we work together on uh, plans to uh, save the rivers really because mm -hmm. the rivers in Bangladesh have been allowed to be polluted and of course uh, there's an interest of factories, tanneries in particular, right. to just put their waste into the rivers and this is killing all the fish and mm -hmm. with it it is potentially killing the country. Yeah, so when you first went in 1992, yes, and the last time you went in was when? Uh, two years ago. Two years ago. Mm. What difference did you see? Notice? An enormous difference in many ways. An enormous difference in there's a cultural development of growth. Mm -hmm. uh, there is more of an equality. Uh, however, having said that, there is still too much pollution mm. on the side of the road at the back yards of people's houses, in the rivers, everywhere you go, there is a huge quantity of pollution. Uh, and really, that needs to be helped sorted. and sorted. sorted. Yes. 
Yes, and I'm, I understand that there is going to be a conference in the UK? Uh, there is going to be a conference later on this year. I'm mm -hmm. not uh, certain at this moment of time when this is, mm -hmm. but the Waterkeeper uh, Alliance will uh, conduct this uh, conference uh, in order to raise awareness mm -hmm. uh, and get, if you like, expats or whatever one wants to call it, the Bengali community here uh, involved in caring for the environment there. Okay, okay. And you took your daughter? Yes. As well? Yes, I took my daughter. I mean, she's extremely well traveled, um, and uh, sort of has seen everything from Japan to China. So I said, "You must come to Bangladesh with me." And she said, "Yeah. Why? Well, what's different about Bangladesh? I've been to India. I've been everywhere." Well, and I she's said, called India. She's Her called India. India. Yes, she's called mm -hmm. India. Um, I'll tell you something funny in a minute. But so, so we went to to uh, Bangladesh, yeah. and I said to her at the time. I can't tell you what's different. I said, I can only tell you, you have to feel it. Mm -hmm. You need to feel it. And um, as, as we took off after three weeks and the plane came up and she saw Dhaka underneath, tears started to come down her eyes and she said, Mama, I felt it. I'm feeling it now. Thank and you. that was the most important Thank thing you. she could have said. Um, viewers, we are going for a short break. We'll be back soon. Welcome back. Uh, on this program, this very special program, Friends of Bangladeshi, we are uh, talking to Barbara Spears, and she has been very interesting. She has told us interesting things about Bangladesh. And now I'm going to ask her about um, the gold she wears. Tell <laughs> us about it. Well, I absolutely love the jewelry I have from Bangladesh. And over the years, 92 till now is a long time. And 10 trips, uh, quite a few opportunities mm -hmm. to acquire yet more. Uh, this particular uh, choker, I call it, I had one similar in silver and I took it to Bangladesh. And I said to my good friend Mitun, I said, Mitun, I said, I'd love to have this made in gold. Mm -hmm. Oh, she said, come with me, Barbara. And off we went to, I think, Mona Lisa Jewelers somewhere in uh, in Dhaka, in the, where all the jeweler shops are. And she sort of said to me, give me this. And then she said to the jeweler, la, 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 la. And uh, he nodded, yes, yes, not a problem. And I left it with him and he gave me a price. I think it was about 800 pounds. And uh, we picked How up. How long did it take? About make? a week. About a week. And it is a perfect, it is perfect in his ability of that creator, Jewel. that jeweler shop, to create exactly uh, what, what I wanted. It is absolutely perfect. And the bracelet as well? Uh, the bracelet at another time, okay. another time. Uh, yes, it had to be made because uh, I haven't got uh, wrists like Bengali ladies. <laughs> I'm a bit uh, bigger. Mm -hmm. So uh, nothing that I tried on really ever fitted me and mm -hmm. I like need to be bigger bracelet. So okay. they make it for me. Excellent. Yes. Yes. So you have so much Jewelries. Yeah, yes, I do. Yes. Okay. Just <laughs> like do. spices. I, yeah. <laughs> spices. Oh my gosh. Um, I was somebody there from Leeds uh, with, with Sharif Jamil and um, he said you should see her spices. And I said, yeah, and I opened a couple of cupboards and he looked and he went, wow. He said, do you mind if I take a picture for my wife? Mm -hmm. I said, no, it's all right. And he took pictures of all my spices mm -hmm. and all the food what on the table. What is your best dish? My best dish is an ordinary lamb or mutton uh, biryani and curry. Okay. That's what I and like. how often do you have that? We have yeah. it at home once a week. Once a week. Absolutely. Uh, I mean, I wouldn't say we live on Indian food, but I would say that Indian food and spicy food is one of our favorites. Mm -hmm. But I might make noodles uh, spicy and then I'll do some pakoras with it. Uh, so, you know, the Indian influence. Like fusion. Yes, fusion. Mm -hmm. Indian influence is mm -hmm. huge. 
Yes. Mm -hmm. Talk about India once again, if I may. When we were in the markets looking for a sari in, in Dhaka, mm -hmm. Mithun and I and India, there was a limited time and I know I wanted a sea green one. Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, India said, oh, I'll try a few stalls. So off she went and on her own sat there and said to these people, sea green gorgeous. <laughs> 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 they showed her a few. And then I called her, India, nothing, India. And all the people looked round at me. I said, India, please. <laughs> and a man looked at me and said, Madame, you are wrong. This is not <laughs> India. This, this is, is Bangladesh. Bangladesh. <laughs> <laughs> okay. T tell us about um, the economy of Bangladesh, what you have found from the first time you went to now, and what are your thoughts about the future of Bangladesh? Hmm. Uh, I feel that there has been growth and I feel that the country is developing. Uh, there are things that concern me currently. The Sundarbans, for instance, mm. is a place of world heritage sites and we are now looking at development there of hundreds of industries and that concerns me. It concerns me that the country grows, grows in a clean way, in a way which is sustainable without harming the people. So I would like to see a development of industries which help the people to grow. I would like to see, uh, if you like, a government initiative to make sure that the accommodation is suitable, that the education of our children, you see, this is a bad thing to say, our children, I am German sitting here talking to you uh, in England and I'm talking about our children, talking about the Bengali children. Mm -hmm. Isn't that funny? Well, so the children uh, in Bangladesh have a future, have an education uh, that teaches them not only the value of education, but it teaches them to be environmentally aware. I think that's very important. Very important, yes. yes. Okay, so on environment issues, we have many problems, as you know, with yes. the floods and yes. also the world environment is deteriorating. Yes. The government of Bangladesh and the people of Bangladesh, they're doing everything possible but we are not getting that support we need worldwide. No, I What is that. your uh, opinion about opinion. that? Yes, uh, I feel that you are not getting the support worldwide. And I do feel that sometimes Bangladesh is overlooked uh, because if you look at India and Pakistan and, and Africa, they are getting a lot of support. Uh, but also that is, uh, if I may say, and it's maybe not a conventional thing to say, some of these countries are getting the support because countries like Britain and Europe are buying through that support. And the United States, they're, yes. they've withdrawn now. Yeah, this is horrendous. Support, yes. This is horrendous. Yeah. You talked about um, rivers, the polluted yes. rivers. Yes. There is tremendous work to be done yes. everywhere, in every corner of Bangladesh, yes. rivers are polluted and yes. this is one of the causes of the uh, bad environment. And health, bad and health, health for and people. Health. So how do you think we can help from being in Europe? Well, I, first of all, I think that there needs to be, uh, it needs to be overseen that there is not so much corruption in those areas. Mm -hmm. Because if a tannery is allowed to put its waste into the water and poison that water, then there needs to be someone at that place to prevent I, that. I think recently the government have started taking actions, you know, removing the tannery owners, their factories yeah. Yeah. elsewhere. Yeah. So I think that but is a positive. That's a positive um, move, mm -hmm. but we need more of more, that. More of that. Uh, we also need to understand how Europe can help. Europe, I think, uh, is concerned about just pushing money. I think Europe uh, could be persuaded to help with projects, mm -hmm. but not necessarily put money into it, because a lot of the money uh, I'm not suggesting in Bangladesh, but worldwide, that is given an aid, uh, ends up very much 
uh, mm. not helping anybody. You have been involved in many organizations, mm. business organizations mm. and so on and so forth. Yeah. Uh, what do you think about Brexit and uh, the Commonwealth? Do you think the Commonwealth will be revived? Yes, I think the Commonwealth can be revived with Brexit. I mean, we are talking um, long term. Uh, at the moment, uh, this government uh, needs to really get, get it itself together in order to deal with the issues Brexit brings. Uh, a lot of people wanted Brexit. A lot of people potentially did not quite understand what it meant. And maybe if you revisited it, which we can't mm. do, uh, you would get a different outcome. But we need to understand that we need to have a clear vision, clear vision on immigration, clear vision on where we're going to trade, how we're going to trade, and whether that means that we are losing revenue and we're losing trading partners. Mm -hmm. As far as uh, immigration is concerned, you know, I think this is a joke. Look at any hospital, look at any facility. You have 80% of non-British people working there. And if they didn't, we would all be dying yeah. of the next flu. Okay, my next question is the community in the United Kingdom. Yeah. So I think it's some decades now since you first met the British Bangladeshi person. Yes. And to date, what is your opinion? What changes have you seen, have you noticed within the community here? I have noticed uh, a new generation of Bangladeshi youngsters integrating into a British way of life. But unfortunately, or fortunately, depends from where you're coming from, still being held at the back of the coat. Mm -hmm. So there are youngsters that are going to school, that are having A-levels, that are going to university, they're mix mixing in a international environment and in order to secure the jobs with big British organizations, they have to display that part of them. How would you like to see the British Bangladeshi community here? We have problems within the catering industry, you know, because of various reasons, I'm sure you were I'm aware. aware. The, it is declining, although yes. we injected 4.2 billion into the economy. Yeah. Yeah. So um, we are lost in some areas, yes. although the younger generation are moving into different yes. um, sort of uh, uh, areas and we are yes. proud of that. So what is your... Um, well, we have to recognize that people came from Salette, they opened restaurants, they had onion peelers in the kitchen and chefs and people, and that was their life. Because of a second generation, the youngsters now want to be doctors and engineers and lawyers. They don't want to do that work. So uh, there is no one coming from abroad unless Britain's government allows the borders to be opened straight away to, to flood this country with 150,000 people who want Thank to you. peel onions. You know, yeah. So you need to look at recruiting local people to do that job. Mm -hmm because I think that that is the only way mm -hmm. you can solve it. Yes, thank you, Barbara. We have learned so much from you and um, we hope that your love and affection um, inspires the Bangladeshi community and we look forward to working with you and I hope you can achieve things through your, through your involvement uh, in uh, Water Keeper uh, yeah. organization and environmental work. Thank you so much for coming to the studio. Thank you for having mm -hmm. me. Thank you.